<clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the last Monday of 2023 and our morning meeting of this virtual hedge fund experience. Thank you all for on vacation already. And I respect you for that. Um, Gryffindor, I spent the whole weekend at uh, Universal. I have a couple thoughts about that for you. Something to go long and short. Let's talk about number one stock on the trading desk today. Um, the highlighted stock uh, to buy, to watch, to trade, in my opinion. I'm going to share that with you. We're going to talk about the risk monitor. We'll start off with big picture, what we think the market's doing here this week and going forward. Drop down into the highlighted stock of the of the day that I'll be focusing on. Uh, and then sharing with you some armor research about the uh, depth of this market. So we'll go through those three things. Don't forget... Um, oh, four things. We'll go over the portfolio and what we changed on Friday, okay? And what's at the top of our list, our top shelf of the whiteboard, if you will, of what we may add to the portfolio if we can find room. Don't forget, virtual hedge fund. It means that you're a portfolio manager on the desk. You're taking this information and anything else you hear, figuring out what your strategy is and executing it. You have to be the smart money, okay? So um, diving in. Gryffindor, I got the shirt on, spent the whole weekend at uh, Universal, had lots of fun uh, with the kids. I have a couple of thoughts about that. Um, but before we dive into that, let's just talk about the market real quick. Last week of the year, the trend is your friend, right? It, it would take something really significant, I think, to whack the market this year. So, you know, does it have to rip higher into the end of the year? Not really. And that brings us to the next point. It's going to be thin trading this week. So you're going to see some wild swings. We saw it last week where all of a sudden there was an hour and a half where the market cratered and then it rallies back to the VWAP. Okay. I think you're going to get a lot of that the rest of the year. So when it comes to day trading the market, there may be opening setups. You want to put those trades on in case they rip higher. Very tight stops. If they don't rip higher, you're out. You wait for the shakeout during the day. OK, and then after that shakeout, you you get on reversal trades for mean reversion. That's kind of the trading we've seen the last couple of weeks. And I suspect that will continue into the end of the year unless the mechanical bull market is just on a stampede. In which case, the market could melt up in the end of the year and, you know, we'll be on some early morning trades that just rip higher. And it brings me to this thought, you know, that I, I realized yesterday that I was kind of bummed. I was kind of bummed at the end of the day. Like, ah, oh, just, you know, I was kind of bummed out. Day off. But I should be really happy. I had a day off. You know it's a bull market. When the market's closed Monday and you're a little bit disappointed. <laughs> That's, I can tell you so many days over the last couple of years where I was like, God, thank God for the Monday's off. Right? You're with me. You know what I'm talking about. And yesterday you're kind of like, well, this is fun, but when's the market open? Hey, you got to enjoy it. You got to get it while it's there. You got to get while the proverbial getting is good, right? So risk monitor green for us early November, November 2nd. We're already max invested and we're maxing out our returns on this rally. So any changes we make, I'm going to talk to you about the top stocks on our whiteboard that I may buy today. Can't do that with cash. The only way I get into those names is by taking down some other names. And I call that managing success. I have to look every day and say, okay, from here, do I want to disturb this position? What type of investor am I? If I'm trying to get long-term on investments. I don't want to touch anything unless they take me out of a stop. Just leave them alone. You're done. You've set up your portfolio and you're making a lot of money. Stop. Stop messing with it. Right? Just let it go and let it naturally create cash in your portfolio. And so. If a stop is hit or a target is hit and cash is generated in the portfolio, then you go look to see what idea to buy. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to doing the research now and being like, oh my God, I'm, I'm going to miss these. So let's cut down those. That could be detrimental to the success and the performance of the portfolio. So try to avoid that. Okay. Let it be natural. Um, and I struggle with that myself. So I'm just sharing with you that I, something that I struggle with because I love doing research. I find a new idea. Um, okay. When, if, if you make those changes, here's the other thing you have to really 
be aware of if you make those changes. Okay. If you're, if you're selling something that is big cap, less volatility to go buy a micro cap while volatility, you're getting further out on the risk spectrum. Don't do that. Whatever risk you were willing to take early November when you were close to the stop, that strategy that you created for yourself that led to a lot of success right now, don't change it up here and get wildly aggressive. If you weren't willing to be wildly aggressive in early November, you can't be wildly aggressive now when we're trading at all time highs. You see what I'm saying? So if you're going to make a swap and I'll give you an example, I'm going to get to the highlighted stock of the day in a second. If I find room for that stock, I'm going to have to cut down my NASDAQ 100 position because it's a NASDAQ 100 name. It's a hateful eight name. I want to own more of it. So I'll cut down the index that that stock is highlighted in. It wouldn't make sense for me to, to cut down my dividend portfolio and buy this stock. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's something I wanted you guys to think about. If you're making changes, make sure it aligns with your strategy that you created at the start of this bull market. Okay. Um, so that's incredibly important as you, as you try to figure out how to manage your success, stay within your strategy. And if you say to yourself, I'll end it on this comment. If you say to yourself, I don't have enough risk on, then I submit to you, the market will give you opportunities. Next time around, when the risk monitor goes green, put on more risk. So you want your max risk on closest to the stop. You don't want max risk on way far away from the stop. Then you just get chopped to pieces or lose a lot of money. Where would I put more risk on? Because there are locations on the way up to put more risk. Okay. So here's the NASDAQ 100. Here's the risk monitor green signal right off the bottom, right off the 200 day moving average. One of the greatest signals we're ever going to get. That was just a gift at the 200 day. Straight up. We are far away from the black line, which is the 50-day moving average, the green line, the 200-day moving average, the gray line, the 200-day, one's exponential, one's standard, okay? Should the market sell off down to the 50-day, down to the red support line, prove that the uptrend is real, hold, reverse, and give us a buy signal? That will be the second entry point, and that will be the moment where I'll take more risk. I'll raise stops on everything and put on more risk. And if it skyrockets, great. If it breaks down, I'm out of everything and I made money from November. You see what I'm saying? But right here, we're just still in the melt-up phase. You don't want to change the strategy you created close to the stop, far away from the stop. Okay? So, and I'll let you know, like the market will do one of two things. It's either going to Here's a scenario. I'm just spitballing with you. So this, I mean, I'm just, this is not me predicting the market, okay? But sometimes the market melts up at the end of the year. The first two weeks of January can be a little bit dicey. Nobody wanted to book profits and pay taxes on it at the end of the year. So it pops into next year and then they book some gains. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes. So first couple of weeks of January, could be difficult, some sell-offs to prove the uptrend. And by the end of the January, the market's ripping again. All right. So if we get sell-off like that, that'll reset the armor algos. And then we'll get a follow-on buy signal. The uptrend's real. The other thing that could happen is just a consolidation pattern. The market goes sideways for three or four weeks. The four-week tight pattern that Investors Business Daily talks about, Investors.com talks about. Four weeks tight, market just goes sideways like this, which will reset the armor algos and then bang, makes a new high, breaks out again. Our algos go positive again. We can add more risk. But right here, we're kind of in the no man's land of a wonderful bull market rip. 
And we just want to sit back, relax, and enjoy it. And any changes you make have to stay within the realm of your strategy. All right. What is the number one stock of the day on the trading desk? There it is. Meta Platforms weekly chart. I wanted to show you the weekly chart. I wanted to say to you that 2023 was the recovery of the collapse. Okay. Zuckerberg came out and said, we're changing the name of the company from Facebook to Meta. We're going to go full on in the metaverse and virtual reality. People thought he was a crazy man. Now they don't think he's crazy. And there's the huge cup. Now you have the handle breakout. You can see this up here in the top corner, red, blue, green. According to investors.com, we just moved out of the pivot zone, which means that the stock is about to take off. Okay. So this first move was a recovery off of what happened to 2022. And now 2024 is the breakout year. Why is this happening? Now, you know, I've been trading the leaps on Meta the last couple of weeks, made some money on them. I'm off from right now. I probably get back on them today. Why am I going to do that? Um, I have a couple of thoughts for you. I want to go back and talk to you real quick about a guy named Peter Lynch. Have you ever heard of him? Do you know Peter Lynch? You guys familiar with the name Peter Lynch? I can see by a show of hands that some of you are. Great. Peter Lynch was, it, it was a legendary fund manager at Fidelity. Kind of put Fidelity on the map. He had a simple plan that all individual investors could emulate when it comes to doing research and figuring out what stocks to buy to build a portfolio, a growth portfolio. His plan was simple. Look around you. What do you enjoy? What do you eat? What do you wear? What are people around you doing? Spot that trend early. Spot dynamic changes in those trends to get on a growth story. Of course, the hard part is doing the research, right? So his idea was, you know, if, if as an example in the 1980s, this is an example, um, you end up going to a coffee shop and you love it. And you're like, wow, how cool is this? It's like a really cool coffee shop. I love it. Now they start popping up all over the place and it's called Starbucks. And it goes on to be a huge success because everybody's going to Starbucks and you figured that out early. That's just one example. I mean, there's millions of examples, right? You can you can think of million Tesla. You were an early Tesla investor. Why? Because you were one of the first guys that bought a Tesla and you thought it was so cool. And then you realized everybody was doing it, right? And it started like this. I mean, that's an example. This is a Peter Lynch style of investing. So I submit to you two things from this weekend. Two things. Number one. Short Disney. <laughs> I'm just, that's tongue in cheek. Disney's already down huge. So I'm not saying to short it today, but I spent the whole weekend at Hogwarts. Okay. And Universal just has Disney licked. I don't know who would go to Disney unless you're five years old or younger. Then maybe you would go to Disney. But as soon as you're tall enough to ride all the rides at Universal, you'll never go to Disney again. Um, that's kind of a little bit of a joke, but I mean it seriously. The second thing is the Oculus 3 has arrived, and it is the pivotal VR product. It's my Peter Lynch-esque opinion. It has arrived with apps that drive the hardware sale. We all know how that works. The apps are in the store that are driving the hardware sale. Okay? We know how that story plays out. It's exponential. A couple months ago, my son, who's 10, there was a couple kids in class that had a VR Oculus. They were playing Gorilla Tag. Go look it up. By the beginning of December, eight kids in class at the Oculus 3. And they're all playing Gorilla Tag. I submit to you by the end of the holiday season, Christmas, Hanukkah, holiday season, 
It's exponential. Going into the holiday season, there were now 10, 10 kids in class. Started with two. Eight were added. So now there's 10. And coming out of the season, coming out of the holiday season, there'll be 40 and so on and so forth. It's exponential. And you know why? You and I had kicked the can in the 1970s. Anyone remember that? Right? Kick the can in the 1970s. That's what we did as kids. Go outside and play with the neighborhood friends until dark. That's what we did. Gorilla tag is get on VR and play with friends all around the world way past bedtime. I mean, that's what it is. That's what it is. It's an app that's driving demand. All the kids in class are playing it. Got to get a VR to join them. They're all going outside and playing. You say to me, let's VR, blah, 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 all these other things. If you haven't done it, you don't know what I'm talking about. I suggest you Peter Lynch it. Get yourself an Oculus. I got mine right back there, sitting up there. I downloaded the boxing program. I'm sore today. It was an incredible workout. Lots of fun. So there was Oculus One. And, you know, the Oculus VR experience has been around for how long now? Must be more than five years. Iteration after iteration. Oculus One, Oculus. I saw the Oculus Two. I didn't buy the product. Eh, It's a gimmick. It's a gimmick. The apps are kind of gimmicky. It's not a gimmick. I submit to you Peter Lynch-esque right now. This is the selling season, and we're going to find out in the next earnings announcements how big that exponential move is. I think it's going to be big. I could always be wrong. Do your own homework. You have to be the smart money. Don't lose money on Meta and blame it on me. I'm just telling you what I think. You got to do your own research. I'm going to own the stock. I'm going to own it directly, or I'm going to own the leaps. I think it's a huge stock next year. And on its back will be roadblocks. I don't like the roadblocks experience right now. But, I, but I'm but i witnessing what the kids are doing. And they're downloading Roblox. They get their VR, they download Roblox. And I imagine Roblox will come out with iterations and apps that are more robust as it grows. Stock broke out on Friday. Gap down and skyrocketed to the close. Meta, Roblox. We won't find out if I'm right about this Christmas present until next year because they'll have an earnings announcement revealing the sales. Don't forget, it's exponential too. You sell hardware and then all of a sudden you start selling apps at a much higher margin. That is a story Wall Street loves. So there's my highlighted stock of the day for you. It's Meta. And I'm going to round it out with a couple of stocks that are top of the whiteboard. Um, uranium, looking to get back into Uranium. Had a kind of a Friday I didn't like, so I didn't hold them over the weekend. But URNM, URA, URA looks, URNM looks really good. I mean, that, that's a good looking setup right there. So um, those are the ways I'm going to play Uranium. If I put those trades on, we'll see. Okay, Um, I still have Palantir on my list, although it's not performing well, but I'm waiting for the double bottom breakout back above the 50. Here's the double bottom. Does the uptrend hold closes above the 50? I'll be long Palantir. Okay, Um, and uh, I don't know for I I, this is just a it's just a toy. MSOS is a toy. Do I want to own some? I don't know. There's so many other places to go, but I do acknowledge I had a nice Friday, you know, and I still argue that if somebody wants to be a cannabis investor, it's better to own leaps out till 2025 and walk away. So you don't get chopped up and you don't waste time and energy on a group that needs the government to give you a gift. That's what it is. Let's call it what it is. You need the government to give you a gift. How's that worked out for people? See what I'm saying? So you want to scratch the itch? Great. There's some leaps out till 2025. Forget about it. It's a lottery ticket. If it ever comes in, up huge. And then we can start investing when we know what the playing field is. So anyway, um, those are the thoughts. 
on my whiteboard. And I'll just share with you this last um, chart of the day. Um, all the talk about the hateful eight um, leading the market, the NASDAQ 100, quietly, quietly, the Dow is the index that's blown out to new highs. Look at the Dow. It's blown out to new highs. I mean, look, the hateful eight aren't far behind. They're, they're at new highs too. But, but look at the Dow industrials. I don't think people realize how well the Dow's doing. And so there's all kinds of oscillators. Here's one, the Dow McClellan summation index. It's just wildly bullish. And what this shows you is that there's a broad bull market. I call it a mechanical bull market. We call it a power uptrend. We call it the best risk monitor green signal we're going to find back in early November. Th this is how it plays out. Broad, the hateful eight leading, the Dow 30 leading, all kinds of different stocks leading. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Enjoy it. Manage success. I'll see you all live on the desk at 930. I can't wait to work with you guys. Don't forget the Armor Investing Way. We give you three ways to work with us. Armor Report. You're going to get this video. You're going to get the, the, the captain's log before the market opens. Execute on your own. You want to execute with us? You become an Armor Insider, join us on the live desk, starts at 9.30. We'll trade together. We work in a room like a hedge fund, basically. Different analysts sharing different ideas, all of us trading and pulling on the same proverbial ore. And then, of course, if you find out that you can't commit time like that, you're, you've got a day job, you can't sit at the desk all day, we are a registered investment advisor. I'm happy to work with you that way if it makes sense. So give me a direct message, give me a call, and we'll chat about it if it's something that we both want to do together. All right. You all have a great trading session, the beginning of the last week of the year. Let's bring it on home, as my mom would say. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Have a great day.